This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad and live today. This morning, as Jesus gives us insight into what the kingdom of heaven is like, we must remember that he isn't referring to that time in the future when we leave this earth and we reside high in the sky, sitting on the clouds with halos on our heads, with wings on our backs and little harps in our hands. Instead, he's referring to what it means to live in God's kingdom now, here on earth, as we experience God's presence for ourselves. So in a variety of ways, Jesus explains that to live in the kingdom of heaven is to be open to the action of God in our lives and to be alert to the surprises that he has in store for us. Now to explain this kingdom, Jesus uses a series of short parables throughout the 13th chapter of Matthew, five of which are recorded in our gospel text for today. It's always important to remember when you read scripture that no one parable ever fully explains the kingdom. Rather, each one of them gives us an, a slight glimpse as to what this kingdom is like. It's only when we take all the parables and consider them together as a whole that we will begin to see the larger picture. The parables are not like some giant spotlight which blasts a bright focused light on the kingdom. Rather, they're kind of like candles each candle which illuminates a portion of the kingdom until the whole can be seen and understood. So let's take a look at today's gospel reading. In this text, we hear the kingdom of being described in terms of a mustard seed, yeast, hidden treasure, fine pearls, and a net. Each one of these images sheds some candlelight onto what the life in the kingdom is like. The kingdom is like a small mustard seed that grows into a large, nurturing tree. It's like yeast hidden in a flower, working quietly to change its environment. It's like a treasure hidden in a field, or a, a very special pearl which, when found, brings great joy. It's like a net which, when thrown into the sea, is indiscriminate in its work, catching fish of every kind. Are you beginning to see the picture? Jesus says that this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. It is small yet powerful. It's so valuable that we must be willing to give up everything in order to participate in it. It's for all people, and therefore it's not up to us to decide who should hear the good news and who should not. The truth seen in these verses is that the kingdom of heaven comes in different ways to different people. For some people, it's going to start out small and grow into something big like a mustard seed. For others, it will work from the inside out, similar to yeast. Then there are those who will stumble upon it, as did the man who found a treasure in the field, and suddenly they're filled with the realization that Jesus Christ is their Lord. Others will diligently search for the knowledge of this truth, as one might search for a pearl. Still others will be caught as fish in the net. In putting all these parables side by side, Jesus is saying that the good news of the kingdom of heaven can come in many different ways. But once it's discovered, whether it is by chance or by search, it is worth all that we are and all that we have. Now, as I read these parables, I can't help but think of Jesus' encounter with a man known to us as the rich young ruler. This man of wealth comes to Jesus and he wants to know how he can participate in this kingdom. Jesus tells the man to go and to sell everything that he has and give it to the poor. When the rich man hears this, he goes away sad for his possessions are more valuable to him than this kingdom of heaven. In stark contrast to this man's reaction, the people in today's parables they're filled with joy when they encounter the kingdom. And guess what? They're willing to sell everything that they have in order to participate in it. Now, the difference in response to the gospel message is found in the understanding of what is most valuable to you. Scripture continually calls us back to the understanding that in the kingdom, what one is is more important than what one has. In the kingdom, we realize that we are children of God and that if we are in relationship with him, we have a value that no one can take away from us. And since we have value, 
we are then free to participate in God's kingdom with joy and thanksgiving. We can celebrate the fact that Christ died and rose for us, that he has made us who we are, and that he will continually work for good in our lives. Now, at the close of our gospel message for today, Jesus tells his listeners to be like scribes who have been instructed in the kingdom. For these people bring out God's word in things, both old and new. So as we search to understand the kingdom, we must begin with these things of old, with the teachings of the law and of the prophets. This background in scripture helps us to understand the foundation of our faith. But the true disciple does not solely depend upon the past tradition. Instead, with the past history serving as this foundation, we then look to the present and then also to the future, to the new things God is doing today and the new things that God will do tomorrow. Only when we do this will we see how we are integrated into the kingdom and how our gifts and our talents might be utilized to help advance it. You see, Jesus wants us to use our knowledge to illuminate new possibilities for life within God's world. He doesn't ask people to give up their gifts and to concentrate solely upon all these so-called religious things. For example, a scholar does not need to give up the gift of study when he or she becomes a Christian, but they should use it in a Christ-like way. A business person does not need to give up his or her business but rather they should run it in a Christ-like way. Athletes don't need to give up their sports that they excel at, but they should participate in a Christ-like way. You see, Jesus did not come to empty life, but he came to fill it. He did not come to impoverish life, but to enrich it. In the same way, Jesus does not want us to abandon our gifts, but he wants us to use them in creative ways for his kingdom. Each of us has been called to participate in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom which is coming, but also the kingdom which is present. What is the kingdom of heaven like? Well, it's like a mustard seed, yeast, a treasure, pearl, and a net. We have all been created in the image of God, and we all have value to him. So use the gifts that you have been given. Use what you are. Use who you are, all to the glory of God. Amen. Remember as you go about your day that yesterday is gone. Tomorrow does not yet belong to you. So why not live today knowing that you never walk alone? We'll see y'all next week. Later.